here is a brand new map yay uh, so on here we have a new town which is from the homestead faction uh, which is not complete at this point there's no one living here yet uh, but it will get there in, in future videos um, and we have our usual army of four humans led by hero Sam um, as you can see we can only see two tiles away from this town um, everything else is unexplored terrain so let's explore it so let's say we move the army over here now nothing's changed uh, we can still see as far as before that is because um, the sight range from the town is two tiles while the sight range of humans on the on the adventure map is one tile so they can't see any further than what the town can see over here yep so let's move a bit further along and now we discover new terrain now this here is a river and we can't go there because we can't swim so let's move this way okay that's as far as we go now notice that these two tiles have grown darker so if i go let's say i go back so now they're brighter this one is darker now that's fog of war so let's keep going um and see okay there we go there's fog of war as we move further away uh, so it's as there's more space between the army and the town um there's a growing cluster of tiles that we have explored but we can't see at the moment uh, 1.8 we need two for the swamp let's go here 1.6 all right so as you can see uh, we explore but this cluster keeps growing so how is this implemented um, so in the Godot portion of the game, um, I've added the shroud layer. So it's layer 11. It's not the uppermost layer. So for example, if we select something on the map, uh, select, we can see what's been selected, even though we can't see the tile itself. Um, just out of interest. Um, and then there are two uh, hexagons that we use for the for the shroud. So there's the unexplored hexagon and there's the fog of war hexagon. So those hexagons are these two. So the unexplored is just a black hexagon. So essentially it just covers um, whatever we might have displayed in the lower layers on that tile. Um, while the fog of war hexagon it's similar, but instead of being completely opaque, it's uh, it's fifty percent transparent. So it looks gray, gray over here, and all it does is effectively it darkens um, whatever we have displayed on the tile uh, underneath. Okay, so let's see how these are used. Okay, so the logic is here. There are two new properties that I've added to each tile. So the properties are is explored and is visible. Uh, and the logic here is that uh, if a tile is not explored, uh, then we just display the the shroud hexagon, the pure black hexagon, and effectively hide everything underneath. Um, otherwise, if it has been explored, then we check whether it's visible. So if it's not visible, then we cover it in, in fog of war, which is the 50% transparent gray hexagon. Uh, and if it is visible, then we remove any kind of shrouding we might have placed there previously. And that's how we get the, the three states of a tile where it's either unexplored or explored but not visible or explored and visible um, okay so how do we ma maintain uh, those states all right so in the c-sharp portion of the game um, whenever the map is changed we end up emitting a signal to godot to say that okay please redraw the map and this is the map that you need to draw now this is the new version um, inside here Okay, so we have logic to do the same for the grid. We only have one grid inside the mission map currently, so um, there's no, no other logic here. Now, inside the grid, we have this line of code, which is new, which is to work out what's visible and what's not, and to redo it, so basically work it out from scratch. And we do that before we uh, package the rest of the, the grid information um, for Godot to display. Okay, 
Now, the way we redo visibility is first, so there are two parts to it. First, we make all the tiles invisible. So by default, nothing's visible. And then we loop through them again and, and basically make those visible that we can see based on uh, what we control on the map. Okay. Now, by default, if we go in here, so when we create the tile, by default, everything is, unexpl everything is unexplored and everything is invisible. So that's how the map starts when it's first created. Um, now, the exploration state we don't tamper with here because exploration state persists across turns. So once a tile is explored, it stays explored. Whereas visibility, that's something that is more, more situational. So um, it's only visible if it's currently visible. So um, th th there's no sort of permanent visibility state for a tile. Okay. Um, that's, that's why uh, when we make a tile visible, we have the logic over here to set both to true and is explored stays true from here onwards because we never set it to false again. Whereas the visibility, we reset um, every time the map changes. All right, so how do we determine whether a tile is visible? Okay, so we work out uh, the side range for that tile, which I'll go into now. Um, and if we have something, so if, if it's more than zero, then we make the tile visible and we work out all the surrounding tiles within the side range and we make all of them visible as well. So that means explored and visible. Uh, okay, now how do we work out the side range? Um, so what we do, by default, it's zero, unless there's a structure on the tile that belongs to the player, or there's a town that belongs to the player, or there's an army that belongs to the player. Um, if we find any of those, uh, we extract the exploration abilities from them. That's basically the start abilities. Now, there could be more than one, so which is the case uh, on this map when we started. Um, so when we started, our army was inside the town, which means that we would have the, the exploration or start ability from the town itself, which has a range of two, and we would have it from the army, which has a range of one. Um, so we would pull out both of those, and then we would say, okay, uh, for all of these exploration abilities, um, we care about how far we can see, and we want to take the, the highest one. So if there's more than one, exploration ability on a tile, we only care about the one that sees the furthest. And then that becomes the start range of the tile. Um, and that becomes, that, that's then used to, to uh, identify all the surrounding tiles that are in start range, and that's how all the tiles are made visible. Now, this is a very simple implementation. So, it's not something we want to use when performance is important. Um, so, for example, if this army moves from here to the next tile, we don't just mark these tiles here as no longer visible and mark these as explored and visible. We basically throw away all the visibility information on the tile map and redo it from scratch. So, it's a lot more work to do that than to uh, just uh, make localized changes based on army, army movement, let's say. Um, so, if performance is important, which I imagine it would be in the in the real-time game, uh, and possibly even a, a turn-based game with a large enough map, um, then this is not the algorithm to use. Uh, the advantage is that it's very simple. So we don't care what caused the change in visibility, whether the army moved or whether we enhanced the exploration ability to see further or whether we took control of some structure so it's now ours, so now we can see from it. Uh, we don't care what changed. Um, the logic to work out what's visible it, is the same in all cases, and it's and it's very simple. Um, so it's it's far simpler than than the other alternatives the, that we that we could have used.